Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Chelsea Dynan, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about travel, but not just any kind of travel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to travel by plane with a cat. But before we get into that, there's somebody very special that I would like for you to meet. So, Stella. Hi, come here. Everybody meet Stella. <laughs> She's very shy, so she doesn't love to be on camera, but this is Stella. I've had her for quite a few years now. She has made four out of my five cross-country moves with me, many road trips, lots of plane travel. So she travels by plane, by car, not by motorcycle, <laughs> um, but she's a champ. And the reason I'm introducing you to her today is because she's a really big part of today's video and all that I've learned about traveling with a cat. If you are a cat mom or a dog mom or cat dad or a dog dad, hi. Um, then you know how special our little furry friends are. They're a part of our family and Stella is no exception and never leave her behind. So just wanted you to meet her. <laughs> Hello. You want to get down? You don't want to do the rest of the video with me? No? You got stuff to do? People to see? Okay. I'll let you go. <laughs> All right. So Stella has been traveling by plane with me since 2013. So she's become quite the champ, quite the pro, but I was definitely not a champ when I first got started flying with a cat. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's pretty daunting and somewhat intimidating to think about traveling by plane with a cat. There's a lot that goes into it. I had no idea what to expect. And so I've created this video just to give you an overall idea of what you can expect leading up to your flight and the day of travel. I've also written a pretty detailed blog post all about this, which I will link to over on chelseadinan.com so that you can check that out after this video is over in case you do want some more details. I've broken this up into three separate sections. The first section is going to be all about booking your flight. The second part is going to be about how to prepare for travel. And the third will be the day of travel, what to expect both at the airport and on the plane. I'll start off by saying I've only used Southwest when I've been flying with Stella before. So all of my personal experiences and opinions will be about Southwest Airlines. This video is not sponsored, but Stella and I definitely love flying with Southwest. Now going from there, please keep in mind that every airline has different policies and rules. Not every airline does allow pets to travel on the plane with you. So be sure to do your research before booking any flights. Rules and regulations are constantly changing. So even what I say today for Southwest might not necessarily apply in the future. So again, just be sure to look into everything before you book. Check to see if they allow pets to be in cabin with you or if they can only travel by cargo. Southwest, as of right now, is an airline that allows pets to travel in the cabin with you only. One thing to keep in mind when you're booking your flights is you might want to consider only direct non-stop flights. I've done both with Stella where I've traveled non-stop or I've had flights that have layovers. And personally, I just prefer having a non-stop direct flight. It shaves some time off of your day. I've always flown coast to coast with Stella, so it's already a really long day. Another thing you'll wanna check before you book your flight is what the rules and regulations are in terms of size and breeds. Not every size and not every breed is allowed on the flight, so be sure to check on that. Then once you have chosen the airline that you will be flying with with your cat, you will wanna call the airline reservation number and let them know which flight you wanna book and also let them know that you will be traveling with a pet. It's a very quick process whenever I call Southwest, I just let them know the flight that I wanna book and I let them know that I'll be flying with a pet. They'll usually ask whether it's a cat or a dog and then they'll tell me the fee to pay. Now keep in mind that the fee generally for most airlines is one way. So if you have a round trip flight, you'll have to pay both times. The reason why it's so important to call the airlines to make that pet reservation is because many airlines have a pet quota. For example, as of right now, Southwest allows six pets to travel on board each flight. So you just wanna be sure that the flight you will be flying on has not already met that quota. All right, so moving into the next part, preparing for travel. The first thing that you'll wanna do is check to see if your pet is up to date on all of their vaccinations. If they're not, you'll wanna get them into the vet as soon as possible to make sure that they are up to date. Some airlines do require you to bring 
proof that your pet is up to date on their vaccinations. So check with your airline to see if you will need those documents. This is also a really good time to check with your vet that your pet is safe to fly. The next thing that you want to check is what the size specifications are for the pet carrier. Every plane is different and the last thing that you want is to show up and find out that your pet carrier will not fit under the seat in front of you. I ended up having to buy a specific carrier just for Stella to use on Southwest flights because the one that I had normally been using for her was too tall. So I'll go ahead and show you the one that I got for her. All right, so here is Stella's carrier. I will link to this below if you're somebody who travels with Southwest a lot because this definitely works. So this carrier has this front zipper side so she can either go in that way or it has this top section as well. This is what I usually use when I have to get her out to go through security. It's a little bit easier to maneuver her from the top. There's also this back pocket where I'll usually keep some of her extra food or a leash if I'm bringing that with me. Again, you can find the link for that Sherpa pet carrier down below. Pet identification, if your pet is not microchipped, then you'll want to get a customized name tag for their collar that has your contact information on it. This is just a precaution in case anything happens and the two of you get separated. And I mentioned food just briefly. I will usually pack either a little baggie or a Tupperware with some extra dry food for Stella. And this is, again, in case there are any delays or any cancellations, just knowing that she has some food with me is great. But once we do get to our destination, I will have that food ready to go. And so when we're traveling from the airport to wherever we're going, I'll offer her that food and many times she'll just nibble some of that up. And then the last thing to do before the travel day is to start getting your cat acclimated both to their carrier and to traveling around. If you do end up buying a new carrier just for plane travel like I had to, I highly suggest getting your cat acclimated as much as possible to that carrier. I know Stella does not like carriers. She freaks out whenever she sees that come out of the closet. So I know that there's only so much you can do. I know that many cats don't love carriers and don't hang out in them. So one thing that I suggest is going for long car rides with your cat in their carrier. This will get them accustomed to traveling with you to kind of some of those bumps along the road and also get them accustomed to their new carrier. So this is always something that I recommend whether you're gonna be making a long road trip or a long flight, it's always best to get them as accustomed as possible. All right, so all of that's out of the way and it is the day of travel. Be sure to pick up their water and food bowls several hours before leaving for your flight. And the reason for this is just to give them that time to digest and to use the facilities. <laughs> Many people ask me whether or not I sedate Stella before flying, and the answer is no, I never have. Now, I am pretty fortunate to have a cat that travels so well. She's just very calm, never makes any noise, gets lots of compliments, but I've never sedated her. And I can't tell you what to do. I would recommend speaking with your vet about whether or not that will be safe for your cat. Like I mentioned earlier, Stella is very smart. She doesn't like seeing her carrier. And so when she sees my suitcase come out and she sees me kind of being off of my normal routine, she knows something's up and she doesn't like it. If your pet is the same, then you might want to take a couple extra precautions. I will usually go and shut a lot of the doors that she'll usually run behind to go hide. She likes to go hide under my bed. So I'll pull that door shut. Maybe it'll be best for you to keep your pet comfy in the bathroom. You can leave them a blanket or maybe one of their pet beds, just so you know where they'll be. This will save you a lot of time and a potential headache when it comes time for you to leave and you can't find your cat. <laughs> so once you get to the airport, now what? Again, this will vary a little bit depending on which airline you travel with. I will give you kind of the lowdown on how it works with Southwest. So when I arrive at the airport, I've already checked in, but I'll need to either print my boarding pass and or check in my bag. Here's something to note about that. Check with your airline to see how many bags you are allowed to travel on board with, including the pet carrier. So for example, with Southwest, you can travel with your pet carrier and one other personal item, that's it. So I always have to end up checking my bag, but with Southwest, two bags fly free. Not sponsored, just saying. So I will often go up to the self-service kiosk and check my bag, print my boarding pass, or what I'll do to kind of kill two birds with one stone is I'll go stand in line for the ticket encounter. I will take my bag up, hand them my ID, and as they are pulling up my boarding pass, I will let them know that I'm also traveling with a pet. 
Now, this should be on your reservation since you've already called and let them know, but sometimes they don't catch it. And if they don't catch it and you don't pay, don't think that you've gotten away with it because once you go to board your flight, then there will be issues. You'll have to go back, check your cat in then, get out of line, you don't wanna do that. So just make sure that you let them know that you are traveling with a pet. Then with Southwest, they'll tell me how much I owe. I give them my credit card. Once the payment goes through, they will fill out a little paper tag that I attach to the pet carrier that just has my information on it. So this is confirmation, not only that I have paid the pet fee, but also that again, in case we're separated, my information is on her pet carrier. All right, so now for the tricky part, going through security. Security can be tricky enough just as a human. So going through security with an animal, <laughs> It's gonna be an adventure. I will walk you through what to expect as you go through security. Now, as you get up to the bins and you start to place your shoes and your other items, your laptop, your Kindle, everything into the bins, you'll wanna wait until the last possible moment to take your cat out of the carrier. You do need to take your cat out of the carrier and you will be carrying them through with you. So I get everything on that conveyor belt and I unzip the top of my carrier and gently try to pull Stella out. Again, this is where it's gonna get a little bit crazy because when people see that you have a cat, a lot of times you're gonna to start to hear the oohs and the ahs and oh, what's her name? What kind of cat is that? She's so cute. And as lovely as that is, it's just not the time and the place to have a chat. If your cat is known to be a bolter or a runner, you might want to attach a harness and a leash just as that extra precaution because it's obviously very noisy and somewhat scary and there's a lot of people around. And if your cat does not like it, who knows what could happen. So just really be careful here. Once you take your cat out of the carrier, I will usually hold Stella kind of like this. I'll kind of cross my arms over her just to keep her as tightly held as possible. And then I'll wait for the TSA agent to motion me through. I will walk through the metal detector. So you'll be walking through the metal detector, not the x-ray machine when you're holding your pet. You'll walk through the metal detector and then they will tell you to hold. They'll have another TSA agent come up to you. They'll take this little white thing and scan over your hands. So they will ask to see your hands as you're holding the animal. Again, this is kind of tricky. So here's what I do. Since I'm holding Stella usually like this, they'll ask to see my hands and I just kind of flip my hands out like this. And while I'm doing that, I'm kind of squeezing Stella inward so she knows you're not going anywhere. Um, I guess you could also just flip one hand out at a time so that you're not releasing that hold on your cat. Um, so then once they scan your hands, they will have you walk over with them to a computer monitor and ask you to hold while they scan it. Now at this point, they're just checking for chemicals, illegal substances that could be traveling inside of your cat. This usually takes just about a minute or two. And then once you're cleared, they'll let you know and you can go back to put your cat back in the carrier, first and foremost, collect your other items and be on your way. Boarding is pretty self-explanatory. With Southwest, since you get to pick your seat, just keep in mind that when you're traveling with a pet, you can't sit in an exit row and you can't sit in a seat that doesn't have under seat stowage in front of you. So again, this is where your cat is gonna feel like a total celebrity because people will notice the little pet carrier, usually the flight attendants will, and they'll ask if that's a kitty or a doggy and what its name is again. So you can give your cat those five minutes of fame as you make your way down the aisle. And then as I find my seat, the first thing I do is get Stella settled. Just all right, ladies and gentlemen, the forward entry door has been closed. At this time, we do need all... So make sure that I have the zipper facing me because there's two sides to that carrier that I have and only one of them has a zipper. And that's also the side that has the full screen so I can see her. So I make sure that's facing outward towards me. Then I will situate my backpack next to her. I always travel with a backpack and I just shove everything in that, including like a little tiny crossbody purse and Stella's carrier. That's my personal item and my cat. So once I have my backpack placed next to her, just to kind of give her a little bit of stability in case there is any turbulence, I get everything else situated and then it's time for takeoff. Now I think takeoff is the scariest part for me, so it's gotta be the scariest part for our pets too, just because it's so abrupt, so loud and very sudden, plus that extreme change in altitude. So usually what I'll do, it's really the only thing you can do because you can't comfort your pet I'll just put my foot there where she can kind of see it so that she knows I'm still there. I don't know if it helps or not, but it makes me feel better. 
occasionally, probably about once an hour, again, depending on the length of your flight, I will just unzip a little portion of her carrier and stick my hand in there and I'll usually feel her little nose and she'll sniff around and then she'll be done. So this is just my way to check in with her to see how she is, but to also let her know I'm still here, you're okay. I haven't left yet. I didn't just put you on some crazy spaceship. And then if you do need to go up to use the restroom or anything, you can just leave your pet there underneath your seat. Then once we've arrived, I will usually pick Stella's carrier up, put it on my lap, put my backpack on, and I'll also usually unzip it then and just let her know we're here, talk to her just so she hears my voice and knows everything's okay again. An overbearing cat mom. <laughs> and then that's it. Off you go, off the plane. Stella did great, but I don't think she's happy right now, so I can't wait to get her out of her carrier. She won't even turn around and look at me. <laughs> And after that, I find my transportation. And that's usually when I unzip Stella's carrier, place my hands in there, just give her a good snuggle and usually offer her some food as well. So that's it, you did it. Congratulations. Be sure to give your pet extra snuggles and love and treats for a job well done. I'll be sure to link to that blog post if you do want some more details and some cool pictures. Have you traveled with a pet before? Let me know in the comments below what your experiences have been like. And if you have any questions about traveling with a cat, you can also leave those in the comments and I will do my best to help. If you want to follow more of my travels as well as Stella's travels, then you can follow me over on Instagram at Chelsea Dinan. Thank you so much for being here. I'm wishing you and your pet many safe travels ahead and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs>